Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Intel stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Intel is the world's largest semiconductor chip manufacturer by revenue and is the developer of the x86 series of microprocessors, which are found in most PCs. The company's headquarters in Santa Clara, California was founded in 1968. It started trading in 72 and can be found on the NASDAQ, Mexican Bolsa, Deutsche Börse, Zitra, Vienna, Swiss, Colombia, Santiago, Brussels, Kazakhstan, Sao Paulo, Lima, Buenos Aires, Hong Kong, and Bulgaria Stock Exchange. It supplies microprocessors for computer system manufacturers such as Lenovo, HP, and Dell. It also manufactures motherboard chipsets, network interface controllers, and integrated circuits, flash memory, graphic chips, embedded processors, and other devices related to communications and computing. It was an early developer of SRAM and DRAM memory chips, which was the majority of its business until 1981. Although Intel created the world's first microprocessor in 1971, it was not until the success of the PC that this became its primary business. During the 90s, Intel invested heavily in new microprocessor designs, fostering the rapid growth of the computer industry. During this period, Intel became the dominant supplier of microprocessors for PCs and was known for aggressive and anti-competitive tactics in defense of its market position, mostly against advanced micro devices, as well as a struggle with Microsoft for control over the direction of the PC industry. The company got a new CEO in February of this year. The CEO said the company will reclaim its technology lead by 2025, also mentioning Intel could triple or quadruple in value. This year, the company will sell 85% of chips for all laptops, Intel's latest server chips are a big improvement, but AMD still holds the lead in that area. Intel has been slow to react to a power shift toward foundries, like Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing. Taiwan Semiconductor is no mere order taker. Its operating margins are double those of AMD. So Intel has been waging a two-front battle on designs and manufacturing. Taiwan Semiconductor mainly manufactures chips for other semiconductor companies a decade ago, Intel was worth $118 billion. That was $40 billion more than Taiwan Semiconductor, NVIDIA, and AMD combined. Now Intel is up to $218 billion market cap, but the other three combined for $1.1 trillion. The new CEO says he will lean in part on outside foundries for now, like Taiwan Semiconductor, while building a foundry operation that will serve other chip makers. Two new Arizona plants are being constructed for $20 billion. The company is also looking at buying global foundries for $30 billion. Let's get started with the model. This is a large cap company, $218 billion market cap. They're trading at $54 a share and they have 4 billion shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So their free cash flow peaked in 2020 at close to 21 billion. It fell to 16 billion in the trailing 12 months, but that's still a ton of free cash flow, $16 billion. Net income is the profit or loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. And that was 21 billion in 2018, 19, and 20. It dropped to 18 and a half billion in the trailing 12 months. Revenue is a sales for the company, and that grew a lot from 71 billion to 78 billion. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue of the sales. Below that is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. The big cost of revenue is the cost of labor and cost of its manufacturing facilities. Revenue minus cost of revenue gives you your gross profit, and that's been pretty steady, around $43 billion a year. Below that is operating expenses. Their main operating expenses are depreciation and marketing. Then below that is operating income, which is also pretty steady, around $22, $23 billion a year and they paid $627 million of interest on their debt. That does sound like a lot of interest payments, but when you have $23 billion of operating income, that's just a drop in a the bucket. Their net income was $18.5 billion, down from $21 billion, but that's mainly due to other income and expenses. I would focus on operating income when I look at the income statement, not net income. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company generates from its operational business. You could think of operating cash flow as net income converted to cash because net income is your accounting profit or loss. It's not actual cash. They generate a ton of cash flow over 32 billion in the trailing 12 months and it was 35 billion in 2020. 
They also have to invest a lot in CapEx because they have to manufacture products. So they have to buy factories and a lot of equipment. And I do expect their CapEx to grow because it looks like they're trying to focus on the foundry business. The foundry business is working great for Taiwan Semiconductor. To put it into perspective, Taiwan Semiconductor's market cap is triple Intel's. And the margins are greater in the foundry business. Operating cash flow minus CapEx gives you your free cash flow. And they have a ton of free cash flow. After investing into their business, they still have $16 billion left over, which was lower than 2020 of $21 billion. They pay out about $5.5 billion of dividend payments, so they still have a ton of cash remaining. So they used that cash to buy back stock. They bought back $11 billion in 2018, then $13.5 billion, then $14 billion. So the two main ways to reward investors are to pay a dividend or buy back stock. When a company buys back stock, that decreases the shares outstanding, making your shares more valuable. It's a lot better to buy back stock for the company because it kind of keeps the money in-house. If they need to reissue the stock, they can sell it and get the money back. But when you pay a dividend, you can't really get that money back. You could cut your dividend, but that's usually a bad move to cut your dividend because then a lot of people get upset and sell off the stock and push your price lower. This is the equity section of their balance sheet and they have 85 billion of equity. They raised 27 billion from selling common stock and they generated almost $60 billion of profit. So this is what you want to see, a big positive in retain earnings. And their retained earnings will be even higher if they didn't buy back stock. This negative $1 billion is accumulated other comprehensive income. These are unrealized losses. An unrealized loss is like when you own a stock and if the stock price went down, it's an unrealized loss. Once you sell the stock, it's a realized loss. Let's look at the capital structure. They have $85 billion of equity, $35 billion of debt. They're 71% equity, 29% debt. Their net debt is $10.5 billion, and their weighted average cost of capital, which is a blend of the cost of equity and cost of debt, is 6.17%. And that's a really low weighted average cost of capital. The lower the WAC, the lower the risk of the company. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. That's $545 billion. We discount those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $494 billion. We divide that by 4 billion shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $122. They're trading at $54, so they're trading at a 56% discount. It's a really strong buy according to the model. This is the third time I did Intel, and each time I'm saying the stock is really undervalued. But just because I think a stock is undervalued, or you think a stock is undervalued, doesn't mean much. You need a million other investors to feel that way, so they buy the stock and push the price higher. Simply, Wall Street values the company at $61 a share, so they're saying it's only 12% undervalued. 27 analysts priced this stock and the average price target was $61, same as Simply Wall Street. The stock peaked at about $75 back in 2000, and their revenue more than doubled since then, and the stock price is lower. So this company can get no respect. For some reason, people are buying the other semiconductor stocks, not this one. In the past 12 months, the stock is up a little bit, it did peak at about $65, $66, but it has regressed since then. This company raises their dividend each year. They're up to $0.35 cents a share, and they have a 2.6% dividend yield. They pay out 30% of their net income and 35% of their free cash flow. So they have a good amount of money remaining to maintain this dividend or grow it if they want. I don't think they're going to grow their dividend much because I think they prefer to buy back stock. And they're a really generous company. Their dividend is twice the industry average. Industry average is 1.3%, they're 2.6%. Plus they buy back stock, so they're always giving back to their investors. And this stock has a pretty low beta, 0.6, so it's not too volatile. It has not done nearly as well as the S&P 500. The S&P 500 is up 33% in the past 52 weeks. This is only up 11%. The 52-week low was 44, the high was 68. And the stock is trading below its 50-day and 200-day moving average. So it seems like the stock is on a downtrend. And this is a really popular stock. 24 to 32 million shares are traded each day. Almost all the shares outstanding are on float. 66% are held by institutions. And 1.3% of the shares are shorted. In the past year, three years, and five years, this stock has done much worse than its industry. Its industry is killing it. It's up a ton, almost 300% in the past five years. And this stock has also lagged the market in the same time frames. Analysts are bearish on this stock. They think their earnings are going to decrease 2.5% and their revenue is going to decrease 1%. In the past five years, their earnings have increased 16%, same as their industry, but in the past year, their earnings are down 21%. Their industry is killing it up 56%. If you invested $10,000 into this company 10 years ago and reinvested the dividends, you have $33,000 today. That's a 12.5% annual return. That does seem really good. But if you compare it to other companies in the industry, they're not doing that great.
To give you an example, if you invested $10,000 into Taiwan Semiconductor 10 years ago, you'd have $125,000 today. That company 12X'd. It's not surprising the big funds own most of the stock. Vanguard owns 8.3%, then BlackRock 8%, State Street, Capital Research, and Geode. Let's look at their financial ratios. They have amazing price multiples. They have a PE of 12. A PE below 15 is considered a great value. Their PE is half the market median and one third the market average. So if you're a big fan of the PE ratio or other price multiples, then you would love this stock. They also have a really good price to sales ratio of 2.8 and a good price to book of 2.6. And the way you calculate price to book is stock price over book value per share. And the way you calculate book value per share, it's equity over shares outstanding. Equity is on the balance sheet, it's assets minus liabilities and they have 85 billion of equity, but they have 50 billion of tangible equity since they have 35 billion of intangible assets on their balance sheet. A company gets intangible assets on its balance sheet when they acquire another company for more than its book value. They have a really good return on invested capital of 20%, a lot higher than its WAC. They can cover their interest payments 36 times. They have a great ROE at 22%. And they have a really good current ratio and quick ratio. And they have a lot of cash on their balance sheet, $25 billion of cash. You won't find many companies with this much cash on their balance sheet. And they're more than well funded. They generated $16 billion of free cash flow in the trailing 12 months. They have $25 billion of working capital, and they pay out $5.5 billion of dividend payments. So they have $35 billion of excess funding. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to companies in the same industry. I've done videos of 13 companies in the same industry as Intel. And if Intel has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in blue, they're better than the average. So they're pretty much better in every single ratio, except current ratio. But they still have a good current ratio of 2.0. Their price multiples are amazing, so much better than the industry average. They have a little higher ROE, a little lower in debt. They have the third largest market cap behind Taiwan and NVIDIA. And Broadcom pays the highest dividend, their second highest. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 56% discount. But for some reason, investors have forgot about this company. They're focusing on other semiconductor companies. But Intel is still a big player, generating a lot of revenue and a lot of free cash flow. I know 20 years ago, they were number one by far. I do see the stock price going up a lot, but I've been thinking that for over a decade now. I'm not sure when that's going to happen. But the good thing is you do receive your dividend payments. I think now with the new CEO, it gives them new life and a different perspective. So I think that's going to help the stock grow as well. I know he has a lot of big plans in place. I rank their free cash flow 6 out of 10, their revenue 8 out of 10, and their ratios 9 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.